I went to the Heritage Pioneer Cemetery in Spanish Fork, Utah, looking for a particular ancestor of mine with the name Mary Catherine Chittister. She was only two years old, and shortly thereafter, her family, who were Mormon pioneers, headed south to settle in Washington County, Utah. And I've only recently discovered that this ancestor, this baby, was supposedly here in this cemetery. We'll talk later about why I'm on this quest, this new mission or rabbit hole that I have gone down recently. For those who are wondering, what is going on, Julie? Explanations will be coming soon, I promise. But first, let's look for baby Mary Catherine. So I don't know what to do about this. It says she's buried here on find a grave, on everything, but her name isn't here. So what does that mean? She was Mary Catherine. The only Mary Catherine I can find is a Mary Catherine Red, and that's totally wrong dates. We have a mystery to solve. I will find her. I will. What I'm doing now is seeing, are there any other Mary Catherines? Mary Ann, Mary McKell, Mary Malcolm, Mary King, Mary Gardner, Mary Leah, Mary Ann, Mary Maria, Mary Catherine Red, Mary Matilda. I wonder if Somehow it got mixed up and they got it wrong and she's buried in the the big cemetery. But it wouldn't make sense because when she died, this this here was the cemetery. Like this was the one. This I mean it didn't look like this, but this would have been the place. So I maybe I can look and see if there was someone with the same years as her and maybe got misnamed. So I did find the right dates, and it is a Mary, but that's it says Mary Maria Pace, which was definitely not her, but it's the only one with the right dates, and even has the right first name. So maybe, maybe they got it wrong? Now I'm just super confused, but also feeling very dedicated to figuring this thing out. Beautiful view. Give it 15 years and this will probably all be houses, unfortunately. Where are you, Mary Catherine? I'm gonna find you. Okay, I think I figured it out. She's not listed. I found, I did a little bit of research and another relative said that she was uh, buried before the main cemetery was built, and that, that totally parallels everything I've read, all the research I've done. So for sure, she is buried here, unless they, you know, buried her in their backyard, which I highly doubt because this cemetery already existed. So she's got to be buried here. But records were lost. It happens. And I think that's something that we need to get rectified. I think she needs to be added. So this is about the Mary Catherine that is listed here. Not my Mary Catherine. Early settlers often faced multiple deaths and burials in one family. On May 5th, 1851, 
John and Elizabeth Hancock Red's 17-year-old daughter, Mary Catherine Red, suddenly became ill and died within hours. She was buried on this bluff overlooking the river bottoms. John and Elizabeth suffered another loss as their 15-year-old son, John Holt Red, was thrown from his horse on November 15, 1853. His heartsick mother died three days later. Then, on June 15, 1858, John Hardison Red died after being kicked by a horse. All four family members were buried in the Red Cemetery, now known as the Heritage Pioneer Cemetery. This cemetery has also been called the Old Palmyra Graveyard, the East Bench Graveyard, and the Upper Cemetery. Settlers to this area built some of their first homes directly below this Pioneer Cemetery. During warm weather, they lived in tents or four-foot-wide wagon boxes. Many settlers dug into ground or hillside for shelter during the winter. There were once so many dugouts built in this area that Spanish Fork was known as Gopher Town. One family who came to this area was quite astonished to see the women coming out of holes <laughs> along the hillsides like gophers. During a very wet spring, one of the dugouts started to leak. More dirt was placed on the top of the roof. This extra weight caused the support beam of the family's roof to break, killing the father. He is buried here, not far from his home. So that means... Jeez, and wow, the things we are learning by going to cemeteries. It's amazing. So they they had dugouts here in this in this hillside. Early pioneer settlers, a bunch of little gophers here in this hillside. It's amazing and really hard to imagine. I wonder how close each of them were to each other. Because they said there were so many. And you'd probably want to be close for safety reasons, but you also would want your own space, you know? And you'd want to maintain the stability of the hillside. It's amazing. Just learning so much and getting so much perspective you know I do love me some history and some drama but also this has just been such perspective living in a dugout in this hillside I can't I just I can't imagine that life they did have a spectacular view so, here along the river bottoms, this is the side of the hill where they would have had their dugouts. I don't know how you even look for, like, signs of a dugout. Old logs, timbers, whatever. But how would you even find it, especially so much later? I, I don't know. I don't know that you even... I don't know what to look for. If I was going to build a dugout, I could see, see this being a place to do it. You'd have the river right in front of you, mountain here behind you, so you'd at least know that you were secure. You know, nothing could sneak up behind you. And then you've got the river bottoms just running right through here, so plenty of water. And then I had pulled over to the side of the road to kind of look at this area and see what I saw. And this lovely lady had just come out of a property and was putting the chain back on the gate of some farmland. And I asked her, you know, do you own the property there? And she said, no. And we ended up, we started talking and she was picking fruit, fruit that is naturally available here. Potawana plums and hawthorn berries. I think that's what they, well, the hawthorn berries for sure. The other used to have the name uh, Indian gold, but the, the proper name was, um, something it sounded like Potawana plums anyways like a little golden cherry it was delicious hawthorn berries they were not she very generously shared some of the the fruit with me and thinking about it you know living right here in your dugout having the water right there and lots of flat open land in front of you where you could you know irrigate and and whatnot it 
does seem like a, a pretty ideal spot you know if, that, if that's what you were gonna do and I'm just sitting here and I'm trying to feel trying to imagine for myself you know waking up coming out middle of the day well I wouldn't wake up in the middle of the day and come out in those days would you but coming out here and having my kid there wouldn't be a road here obviously and letting my kids play but not wanting them to go too terribly far because there were so many concerns having them gather water from the river I'm, I'm thinking very like little house on the prairie you know this is such a journey that I am on and it, it all started with Jenny who lived and died in my house we'll have to talk about her next time but for today I just want to kind of try to feel you know what that must have been like living in a dugout right here building a dugout you know digging it out getting the wood chopping down the trees here which luckily there seemed to be you know plenty well I mean not plenty plenty but there's enough that you know you'd have wood for you know the support beams and the structure although there was you know someone there that the structure collapsed and killed the father unfortunately and is buried in that that pioneer cemetery but wouldn't it be interesting uh seeing how they how they dug them out the process of it and then building up the support frame and and the front of the dugout you know and just their life their life here these are things i just had not thought about I've have gone down a rabbit hole, that's for sure. Coming out of your dugout, heading down here to the water. You got a bucket, probably. You don't have hokas on your feet. I don't know, you'd have, if you had shoes, not everyone had shoes. you come down here with your bucket be a little tricky I don't know what the shore was like in in those times but I mean yeah I guess you could get down to it but I mean you're gonna slide right down there I don't know who knows maybe they had some little trails they built to get down easier to the water right here in the marsh area of it could be and I wonder if this river froze over in the winter what that would be like and did they come down here to bathe that's a good chance don't you think can you just imagine it in those prairie dresses and they're button shoes or whatever they had slipping and sliding their way down here with their buckets and then oh my god carrying the buckets back up lord in heaven carrying those buckets in their slippery shoes and all those skirts because you know it was the women doing it and then carrying those buckets all the way back up to their dugouts they're doing their housework while the men Theoretically, <laughs> I'm assuming, are out there in the fields. <sighs> Some crazy stuff to think about, isn't it? I'm going to think about it as I turn on the shower tonight. <laughs> I'm going to think about this. Or I get the water for my coffee. I'm, I'm going to think about this. I really appreciate you coming along on this leg of the journey, the journey to discover my ancestors, to find meaning in the past and how it has informed the present 
to try to understand all those things and people, the characteristics, the traits, all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, the yucky, the wonderful, all of it that came to creating my present family and myself. It's a journey of understanding and appreciation, and it is incredibly emotional. So I appreciate you coming along and being part of this journey. More to come. This rabbit hole is a bottomless pit. (laughs) I'll see you soon.